But when I got up this morning for my prayer time, I just really didn't have peace with that. Not because of what's going on in our world, not just our country, but our world. But because of what's going on over in Israel, it's really a good barometer to show you what's going on in our country. Our country is badly broken. Our country has slipped deep in sin. And we've offended a holy God. I have to say, Yahweh, why is Israel going through this? Well, let's be honest. If you read the Old Testament, you'll see that there are times when Israel would get away from God. They would turn their back on him. And there would be times when he would allow enemies to go after them, to wake them up, to bring them back. I don't know if that's what's going on, but I can tell you today that in Israel, there's only like 20 or 30% of the people that are really orthodox who follow the Torah. Very few. It has become almost, and I can hardly even say it, a godless nation. Israel. America is becoming a godless nation. If you don't think so, turn on the news for about five minutes. Our people in politics, they can't get anything right. They're all so stupid. They're all so selfish. It's all about me. Nothing's about us anymore. Nothing's about us as a people. We don't care about... You know, it was a time, if I was going to be in the Congress, that I could go to the Congress. Just me. Nobody. I didn't have to have a millions of dollars in my bank accounts, and I didn't have any lobbyists telling me how to vote. I went because it was an honor to serve my country. Not today. Everybody's got a, an angle. Breaks my heart. Two Saturdays ago, three Saturdays ago, Israel... These people are just minding their business. There were kids out there, 250 young people at a party, at a concert, having a good time. They weren't worshiping the Lord. I'm not saying they were out there having church. And all of a sudden, out of the sky comes these monsters on these gliders, homemade gliders with machine guns, and they killed right there 250 of these young people. Just wasted them. I heard one report they threw like five people in a minivan and right as they were shutting the door they threw two grenades in there with them. I mean the things, the atrocities that they're doing, I can't even get over it. Why Yahweh? Why are these things happening? And then you hear these terrible, and they're, they're, they're true. People are saying, I saw these idiots in New York City protesting, we're all for Palestine. Really? What do you think about them beheading babies with shovels? They're doing that. Oh, that's propaganda. No, it's pictures. It's fact. We are so wicked as a people. We can't even come together against on right and wrong anymore. We're in trouble. So where did all this come from? Why are we so crazy? So I found a really cool article. I'm going to, this is Steve's reading hour today. I'm going to read you something I found, but I think it should help you. I think it's going to help you understand some of what's going on. These young people, these young college kids, they have no idea of history. Of course, they're trying to take history out of our schools, you know. No history books. The history is I see it. That's the way it goes anymore. The American, British, and Arab states can debate whether the Mideast peace plan, whatever one they want, but nothing can change the preeminent fact that Israel is titled to the land it has and has been for over 3,000 years. It's so so in, most, in the most historic, accurate document in history, the Bible. The land of Israel was given by God to the descendants of Abraham in the book of Genesis. God appeared to Abraham and said, I will assign this land to your offspring. Genesis chapter 15, 18 through 21. In this passage, God made a covenant, an agreement or a contract with Abraham. And he repeats this covenant is eternal and unconditional throughout the Bible. The medieval scholars and Bible commentators, Rashi, Rabbi, uh, good luck on that name, asked, 
why if the Torah is the book of laws for Jewish people does it begin with the history of creation and the lives of our Jewish forefathers isn't that something it all started at the beginning the Torah starts in the beginning it all started back then Rashi's answer was there will be a time when nations will claim the Jews stole the land of Israel and that that land, blends, that land belongs to others and not to them. Rashi explains that the Bible begins with the story of creation first to establish that all the world belongs to God and only he has the right to apportion it. And according to the stories of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, God promised the land of Israel to the nation of Israel. Now, if you've ever seen the Holy Land, a map of it, it's this big area, right? Huge. And Israel's like my finger. That's all they got. But they inhabited all the land. God makes very clear that the land of Israel would not be given to the descendants of Abraham's son, Ishmael, rather, to Isaac. In Genesis 17, 19, God tells Abraham, Sarah, your wife will bear a son, you shall name him Isaac, and he and I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring to come. In Genesis 17, 20, and 21, the Bible promises to bless Ishmael, who is the ancestor of all Muslim, Muslims, and use him to create a great nation. But his covenant to Abraham, which again prominently included the specific promise of land, was to be accomplished through Isaac, not Ishmael, removing any ambiguity. When the people of faith read the Bible, they understand the intrinsic connection between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. In fact, as we note, the Israel Bible, there are over 1,000 verses in the Hebrew Bible connecting the Jewish people with the land of Israel. But those who question God might also question the historical veracity of the Bible or might incorrectly assume that in a proverbial game of telephone, it has been altered after many years. Good. Listen. Extensive techniques have been used by Jewish scribes for centuries to make sure the Bible we hold in our hands is the most historically accurate document from the ancient world. Copying scriptures has always been considered a sacred task, and therefore literally thousands of quality control methods were put into place to ensure reliability. For instance, the Torah must be written by hand by a scribe one letter at a time. This process means writing a Torah can take more than three years. And upon completion, the document is once again checked for accuracy before it can be used. Further, the massive amounts of the archaeological evidence supports the notion that Israel has been in that land as long as the Bible recounts and that the words of Scripture are historically true. Nearly every archaeological dig in Israel supports the understanding that the Jews have had the presence of Israel for thousands of years. Jewish and non-Jewish archaeologists have found coins, pottery, and literally full cities that reveal the Jewish presence in Israel predates any claim of any other people in the region may have. We know the Jews had presence in the land of Israel until the Romans conquered it. However, the Jews were ultimately driven from the land in two dispersions in the years 70 and 135. Now listen to this. The Ottoman Turks had control of that holy land, Jerusalem especially, until World War I when they fought against the British on the German side. The British sent troops against the Turks in the holy land and under the leadership of a Bible-believing Christian general, Edmund Allenby. In 1917, Allenby camp captured Beersheba from the Ottoman Empire and saw himself within striking distance of Jerusalem, hoping to deliver the city as a Christian or as a Christmas present to the British people. The night before the attack against Jerusalem, Allenby prayed that God would allow him to capture the city without damaging its holy places. That day, Allenby sent World War I biplanes over Jerusalem on a reconnaissance mission. 
The Turks had never seen an airplane, and when they looked into the sky and saw these planes, they did not know what they were and were very terrified. Further, they were told by those going to be opposed, they were going to be opposed by a man named Allenby, whose name in their language means prophet from God. The Turks dared not fight against the prophet from God. So the next morning, when Allenby went to take Jerusalem, he captured it without firing a shot. Not taking the religious significance of his role lightly, when Allenby entered Jaffa's gate on December 11th, he dismounted off of his horse as a sign of respect for the holy city, believing the only Messiah, only the Messiah could enter the city riding on an animal. It was in a few short weeks, 40 days to be precise, between the battle of Beersheba and the capture of Jerusalem that the Balfour de Declaration was issued by the British government. The Declaration, a short letter from the British Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour sent to prominent, to prominent British Jew Baron Lionel Walter Rothschild and expressed the British government's support for a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The Balfour Declaration considered the local inhabitants of Palestine, but most of all, it was addressed to the Christians in England. England, more than any other, more than anything, needed a moral case in advance of Allenby's take in Jerusalem. Not for the Jewish conscience, but for the Christian one, wrote Barbara Tuckman in her classic book, The Bible and the Sword, England and Palestine from the Bronze Age of Balfour. That case came from the Bible because the Bible says Israel belongs to the Jews. Now why do I tell you that? Because, and this is, this is not refuted. Hello? This is not refuted. This is history. Now some people will try to tell you that the Holocaust never happened. Six million Jews were killed, at least, by the Germans. But there are those out there that say, no, that never happened. That's propaganda. Oh, really? There are people alive today who, who witnessed it. Oh, they didn't kill those babies over there. That's propaganda. Really? There are parents, or I should say grandparents, that are mourning for their children. Whole families wiped out. I can't even believe some of the things they've done. Why am I bringing this up? Because we need to understand there is a time that we need to say there's a right and there's a wrong and I need to come down on the side of right. I need to come down on the side of righteousness every time. I am not going to compromise. Maybe it's not popular to say this. I'm sure somebody might watch this and yeah, yeah, Pastor Steve. My friend Jang one Sunday, she said, you know, you can't preach like that over in China or you can't preach like that in Canada. You get arrested. Come and get me. You know what? We got to stop this political correct bull crap and start telling the truth, people. We are in trouble in America right now. Parents, we need to start disciplining our children. Fathers, you need to stay at home and raise your children. Mothers, you need to stay with your husband. I've talked with people who go through difficulty and they're poor. And I said, why are you and your husband not together? Well, because I can get more money from the government if we're separate than I can if we're together. That's the truth. We have created a cesspool in America and we will answer for it to a holy God. I don't know where this is going. The United States has a military force over in the Mediterranean. The Bible says that the last battle is going to be over there. And if this is that time, let it be so. But if it's not that time, we need to bring as many people to Jesus Christ as we can while we still got time. We need to stop being politically correct and just tell people the truth. If I had just moments with somebody and that's all I had, you think I'm going to tell them some cock and bull story to make them feel good or do you think I'm going to tell them the truth? Well, people, you don't know what moments you have. 
How many in this room today can say 100% you're going to be here tomorrow? You can't. You can think so. But the only one who governs your heart is sitting high and looking low. We've got to stop. Man, we've got to wake up. You say, well, what can I do? What can we do? We're just one little church in South Omaha. We can start getting right with God. We can stop compromising. We can start living every day, reading His Word, seeking His face, praying for the poor, feeding the poor, giving people something to drink, helping people when they need something. The Bible didn't tell us to go out and have these great monstrosities, have great worship services, have rock and roll services, sing and have the pastor tickle your ear a little bit and make you say a couple of funny things and make you think he's wonderful. It didn't say that. So we're supposed to go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptizing them into Christ Jesus. That's what we've been called to do. You've been called to do it. I've been called to do it. How are we doing with that? How many in this room would say you're a born-again Christian today? Let me see your hands. Praise the Lord. What could we do? Look what Jesus did with 12. Turn the world upside down. What could we do? What could you do? Guys, I'm just showing you that <laughs> this country's in big trouble. I can't even watch the news. These, these kids, they're so stupid. In all the major cities... London, New York City, Berlin, all pro, pro-Palestine. Now the Palestinian people, I'm praying for these people. Hamas is hiding behind these people with the knowing that they're going to get killed so they can say, oh, look at Israel. It's just so wicked. And they all play the game, I'll be honest with you. The only innocent one here to me is the babies. That's the truth. When we're young, we're sweet. Then we get older and we get smart. And once we get smart, we really need the blood of Jesus. Because we're not as smart as we think. Look what the word says, Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. For this is what Yahweh the Almighty says, After the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you, for whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. Even when Father let Israel go through some difficulty, he never destroyed them. And if they would say, Lord, help, he would say yes. Jesus does the same. Some of you in this room, there was a time you walked closer to the Lord, but you're letting the things of this world completely take you out of play. You're not even in the game. You're not even in the game. You don't pray for nobody. Except for your own. People, this ain't about us. This ain't about Omaha. This is about heaven and hell. And Israel needs our prayers. America needs our prayers. Desperately. He says here in Deuteronomy chapter 32, 11 through 12, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft, Yahweh alone fed or led them. No foreign God was with him. He's always with them. He's with them. He made a covenant. Why is he with them? Because they're good people? No, he made a covenant and he can't break his covenant. God can't lie. It's impossible. So when he makes a covenant, you can stake your life on it. I wouldn't bet against Israel because they have, they have, you know the old saying, my dad can whip your dad. <laughs> Their dad can whip anybody. <laughs> I mean, here you get this little strip of land and then you, all these Arab nations hate them. If it comes down to a knockdown drag out, my money's on Israel. Why? Because Yahweh said so. He promised he would protect them. I want you to know, because there's so much out there, they're blaming Israel for this, and Israel did not murder. Now, sadly, there are innocent people dying now, hiding. Hi Hamas is hiding behind them. They put their, they put their little uh, cachet of weapons in schools and in hospitals. 
They do it on purpose. They don't care about those people. They care about their agenda. They're nuts. And I can't believe people in America who call themselves, when she started singing America, America, I started to cry because I don't know that place anymore where we would all come together and fight back. What if somebody came into our country, started killing Americans just wholesale killing them like that it'd be a little bit different we got a lot of guns in America they took away Israel's guns years back did you know that this whole thing could have been a little different now I'm not saying let's get out there and let's go to war but I am saying that the second amendment says that we can protect ourselves and you know who we're supposed to protect ourselves against the government our government that's why they put that in there so we can't get these nut jobs in there and start making us not free let me give you a couple more scriptures and then we're just going to pray some of you have never been here before you're going to say wow this guy's crazy I don't know if I'll be back well I hope you come back I am crazy but I am crazy about Jesus You know, my psychiatrist told me I was crazy. I said, if you don't mind, I'd like a set companion. He said, okay, you're ugly too. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. Said, okay. Told me to lay on the couch face down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Deuteronomy chapter 33, 29. Blessed are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by Yahweh the Lord. He is your shield and helper and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you and you will tread upon their heights. Isaiah chapter 46, 4. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. I'd love to go over to Israel and be preaching this in their synagogues. But I'm sure they are already. They sure don't need me over there. Psalms 121, 4 and five and seven indeed he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep Yahweh watches over you Yahweh is the shade of your right hand Yahweh will keep you from all harm he will watch over your life send revival to America Lord send revival to Israel Lord we need revival when 9-11 was attacked for about a month we all got fired up and we all became a country again it's about it about a month's all it took well then before you know it we're right back people please wake up wake up to what's going on in our country this goal I mean let, let's just call this thing like it is there's a lot of stuff going on this global warming and all this stuff they are manipulating our minds. They're doing it on purpose. We need to start living for Jesus. You can't be deceived when you're walking with Him. If you're really walking with Him, He will protect you and you'll catch on to all their games. Just nonsense going on out there, but we just like dumb sheep are led to the slaughter. You know how stupid sheep are? If the leader sheep walks off the cliff, the rest of them... <laughs> That's how we are as Americans. Stupid. Uh, so my prayer is that Father would send revival to and save the soul of America because the American soul is in trouble. We've broken the heart of the Almighty. And it breaks my heart because it's like the precious blood that Jesus shed on the cross. Every drop of blood it almost seems to me like it was in vain because we don't love him back. And it wasn't in vain, thankfully. But we should start living like we appreciate it. We should start living for him and not for ourselves. He did not put us in this earth to be what we are demonstrating as a church and as a nation. Let's get it right. Let's ask for forgiveness. Let's repent of our sins. Let's ask the Lord to save our souls. 
Because the only hope for mankind is Jesus Christ. He's the only hope for mankind. There is no one else. It's not Donald Trump. It's not Biden. It's not the Congress. It's not the one world government. People better wake up. That's all in the Bible. And they're trying to get it going. I just want you to know what's going on. I'm trying to give you some smelling salts. I'm trying to smack you around a little bit to say, <laughs> wake up. It's happening right in front of our eyes. And the devil has just hypnotized us. When I say to you today, come out from under the ether of Satan's sins and his lies and this government propaganda and start getting right with God. Pick up your Bible. Put down your remote Let's start getting right with God. Because, man, I don't know what's going to happen. We might be at war before you know it. I'll say one more thing. Maybe two. When I was being... Well, when I went into basic training, we were told we were going to war against Iran. All those years ago, because they had taken our hostages. Some of you guys don't remember this. You're too young. They had them for how many days? 144 days or... 400, yeah. They had them all, over a year. And so they said, you're going to Iran. You're going to, so we trained to go to war. I really thought we were going to war. And ever since then, even before then, Iran has been pulling the strings. I, Iran is a tool that Satan uses in that whole region. And so we just need to pray for peace in the Middle East, God's way. God's way. And I pray for peace in your heart, God's way. I'm saying these things to you because somebody's gonna come up and say in just a matter of a week, oh, that darn Israel, look how they're doing all these things, people. <laughs> Think what they did to their people. Today, I ran is over there saying death to Israel, death to the United States of America. And our stupid government has given them billions of dollars. Why? I have no idea. Now if I love Bob, and I do love Bob, and if Gary's Bob's enemy, how do I love Bob if I'm giving Gary six billion dollars to get Bob? Do you see what I'm saying? This is what's going on. So we're being played like puppets. So what I'm saying is people get your hearts right with God because something's coming and you need to be right with God. You better be ready. This is why this whole thing, this is why I'm saying what I'm saying. You need to know what side you stand on. Moses came down the mountain. He was on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments. And while he was up there, they said, well, he's way too long up there. I think he must have died. Aaron, make us a golden calf. Everybody give us your jewel. Give us your gold and silver. And they made a golden calf, an idol. America has many. Moses comes down the mountain after receiving the Ten Commandments written by the finger of Yahweh. And he hears noise down in the camp. And he comes down and he sees them after going face to face with the only God. He sees them worshiping this idol. And he said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And the people that came to him were pretty smart. Because the ones that didn't, the earth caved in on them. I'm just saying there's a cave in coming. What side are you on? If you're on the fence, when everything caves in, the fence is part of the destruction. You can't be on the fence. You've got to be standing on the rock-solid ground that is Jesus Christ. Yahweh, today I, I thank you for knowing that you are the, the sovereign one, that nothing happens here in America or in Israel or anywhere in the world that you don't know about. The Word says that even a sparrow falls out of the sky and you know it. I'm just asking you to bless this people in this room and those who are listening to this message that there will be a move across this nation, but let it start right where I'm at. Let it start where they're sitting. Let our hearts get right. Help us to get this garbage and the, the false and the lies 
out of our lives. Help us to get focused on you, Lord Jesus. Help us to get into the Bible and understand what's going on. Because, Father, I believe you're going to use this group of people to help bring other people to Christ before it's too late. The church is not a hotel, a luxury hotel. It is it's a mercy ship. It's a hospital ship. It's out there trying to find survivors. And so, Lord, help us to be a, a body of believers that trust your word, that are filled with the Spirit, and that will bring people to the truth of Jesus Christ and won't get caught up in all of our little petty things. Father, some of us are going through difficult things right now, but in comparison to what's going on in the world today, I would say a lot of it is very petty, so forgive us. Please, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. In Jesus' name. Now we're going to have communion. Why do we have communion? Because Jesus went on the cross to die on the cross for our sins, to pay for my wickedness. Remember what I said last week? That had never come out of my mouth before. But the Bible said that he who knew no sin became sin for us. Jesus never sinned. But yet at that moment when Father put the sins of the world on Jesus and Jesus said, oh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because the word says Yahweh can't look at sin. So for the first time in his existence, Yahweh turned his face away from Jesus. And Jesus became a robber. And he became a wife beater. And he became an adulterer. He became a rapist. And he became a bank robber. He became a murderer. Because he who knew no sin became sin for us. He became all those things that we are to save us. So why we go to communion is because the Bible said on the night before he went to shed his blood on the cross for me and for you that he sat with those who were precious to him and he took the bread and he gave thanks and he took the bread and gave it to his disciples and said take and pass this along every one of you because this is my body which is given for you. They really didn't understand what he was doing. But the Lord said, as often as you come together, do this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten the bread,